and I would be very leery to use people who are not local because you want to make sure you're working with somebody who really knows what they're talking about. Let's watch this together. Hey, Jaren. Um I'm gonna try to make this quick and straightforward. So uh, this is a property that, or a series of three properties, set of three properties in Baldwin County, Alabama. I spoke with you about it before. This is the one where right here, you can kind of see at these three properties here. This one, there is a, um, I think one, maybe two, I think there might be two mobile homes there that are occupied. And um, we had talked about it uh, and basically they have, been living there for over 20 years. This woman was under the impression that she had bought it from Katina's father, uh, probably on a contract for deed or something like that. And um, she is this person here, Adela Shower. So she had bought this one, uh, and that one with title was transferred. This one, I'm not really sure what the situation is. I spoke to a lawyer, and it, it seems like probably there's not. It's it's probably more like her father, uh, probably on a contract for deed or something like that. And um, she is this person. They have been living there for over 20 years. This woman was under the impression that she had bought it from Katina's father, uh, probably on a contract for deed or something like that. Oh, and kind of see at these three properties here. This one, there is a, uh, I think one, maybe two, I think there might be two mobile homes there that are occupied. And um, we had talked about it uh, and basically they have been living there for over 20 years. This woman was under the impression that she had bought it from Katina's father, uh, probably on a contract for deed or something like that. And um, she is this person here, Adela Shower. So she had bought this one. Uh, and that one with title was transferred. This one, I'm not really sure what the situation is. I spoke to a lawyer and it, it seems like probably there's not, it's it's probably more likely this is actually Adela's property. Like it's it's just, um, I don't know that Katina's gonna be able to get it. You had suggested, because Katina wants to sell all three together, you had suggested trying to purchase it at a price that works for these two and just deeding this one to those tenants or squatters, whatever you wanna call them. So you'll find more information here in the um, Pebble. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I've got the comp, uh, uh, you know, review or whatever of the two properties. The third one I haven't included here, but basically, uh, one property is uh, 0.7 acres. It's off of a dirt road. That is this one right here, and you can see there is some wetlands cutting across, little stream cutting across. This one is zoned for mobile homes, and you could put a mobile home right there per, per the setbacks, as far as I uh, remember. Um, but I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure because you've got plenty of space there. Uh, it is. Uh, let's see here. It's 79, about 80 feet wide, um, and uh, it's all zoned RSF. Uh, four, uh, you can find, yeah, there's some of the setbacks here, uh, side yards, 10 feet each. Um, this is something about the zoning here. You can also find more information on my due diligence under, uh, this link here. Um, the, uh, so then the, the comps is this one, you know, I am saying maybe we can sell it for 39, maybe right around there. Um, and then this one, uh, is the three acres. That's this corner par parcel here. It's not zoned business or commercial. It could be rezoned potentially by us or by the, the buyers, but right now it's still that residential four and, um, this is what I'm thinking. Now I did have a broker's price opinion done and I'll try to include that when I submit this to you uh, from a guy who, I don't know, he, he's uh, not in Alabama. He's I think out of maybe Tennessee. He covers a couple of states. He says he's a land specialist. I don't know if he's, you know, because I, I had a couple of different uh, deals first where I talked to one realtor and she said she thought that this property here would sell for 250 and uh, this property here, I think she said like 60. Um, the BPO I got, uh, official BPO, that gentleman thought that this one would sell for like 135, I think is what he said, 125 to 135 maybe. And this one for like maybe 32, is uh, those are the prices he said to move it quickly. I'll try to uh, include those as a uh, attachment um, if I can. Uh, but that BPO I got from him, that was uh, six months ago or whatever, five months ago in March, March, February, March, anyways, it was several months ago. Um, so uh, I'm about to run out of time here. Um, yeah, so with the comps, I want to make sure to tell you, uh, I tried to put some uh, notes here, like this one was uh, purchased on the MLS, but then now it's currently listed for sale at a higher price. This one is cleared. You know, both of those <laughs> lots that I'm uh, looking at purchasing are not cleared, they're, they're wooded. Uh, this one has an amenity with an airstrip fee, so that's kind of a different deal. This one's zoned light industrial. And then over here, same thing, just this one's cleared in a subdivision. So it's, it's uh, but this is the cheapest listed comp in that um, range from half an acre to an acre. Um, but otherwise, I will sign off. Let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. All right. So just curious, what are your guys' initial thoughts? I do like your idea, Jennifer, of giving him a grade. Any takers? Come on, don't be shy. I have my thoughts on things, but I wanna hear from you guys. Okay, I would agree it's not an A. Um, maybe B minus. Why do you think it's a B minus? I think like, um, this is terrible. I know I'm like no person to judge. Um, I think, you know, it's like good having all the backstory, but I think it's just kind of like having the final like outcome of just kind of what he has the comps for and then, you know, what the agent said and then 
um, just confirming that like everything checks out as far as setbacks, all that stuff um, would have been good. And then maybe he could have asked like, hey, this part with the mobile homes is just kind of still a little bit of a question mark, but like, here's what I'm thinking. Um, and then maybe I just wasn't following along, but it's, it was like, I kind of don't know. Um, I didn't know what he was like asking for. If it was like, there's a lot of numbers. So I don't know if he was like, I didn't really kind of grasp the final comp, I guess. Yeah. Um, and maybe I just missed it because I zoned out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, um, he was asking kind of my thoughts because he's having two different Asian opinion of values that are substantially different. One was like, I, I think 135 for this three acre and one was like 250. And then mm. the other, uh, he didn't, I don't think he mentioned the higher agents value for this, uh, or the lower agent rather. So, um, but the higher agent who's local is saying 60 for that. Um, and he's he's talked about this property before to me offline um it's gonna be a bit of a legal issue to figure out the title stuff with this because it's supposed to be under a different uh it's potentially this neighbor's property so the seller is saying as i understand it that all three underneath theirs, but the title, like, are, are this part, I don't know. They said 125 to 135 maybe. Oops. Yeah, so um, the long and short of it is that this one is gonna have to be included into, like, as a package deal and just extension of, of the, these two are, are kind of looped in, but um, I have to, long story short, I have to talk to him and clarify a couple stuff. Here's where um, I think there could have been room for improvement. Um, the, there is only one agent that I know of who covers a wide range of, uh, territory that is actually ever panned out over years and years and years and years of working with agents. We always want to go with a local land specialized agent, always, um, local is key. And, um, if you're having such a substantial difference in valuation, I would get a second local agent opinion of value to help give me insight because I'm, I'm at a toss, right? But if, you know, there are people out there that are kind of their own version of a land investor that specializes in disposition, but they just do exactly what we do. So they have MLS access or push it through brokerless MLS, push it on the Facebook groups on marketplace. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, and and our land.com, and they, um, are, you know, are able to be li they're licensed in the area, but they're not local. You know, getting a sign out there, having a a buyer pool of local people or people who want to buy locally, they don't have access to that. So if I I don't give much credence to the agent that that said lower value like the 135 because he's not local. Um, the one that he did talk to give a higher value, but it, I, they, he didn't show me in this, vi vi uh, in this video their listings. So ideally, if you're going to present a land specialized agent uh, opinion of value, I want to know what their profile looks like, whether it's their agent profile on Zillow or Redfin or Realtor.com or whatever. I want to see their uh, current and past listings, and I want to make sure that there's at least 30% land to other types of real estate. Um, I want to understand why you think they are land specialized as opposed to just a normal agent throwing you some pie in the sky number. Additionally, uh, the comps that he used, we can't use because uh, this one we can, that it was sold on the MLS, or it was purchased on the MLS recently. What was it purchased for? Um, if they relisted it for 175, that could be an indicator of valuation. Um, but if this property is going to include a piece of this bath parcel, then, um, how much of that is going to be included? Um, 
and if so that's going to extend the boundary lines um potentially maybe not officially but like that that might come into your valuation um additionally the airstrip with fee of course that's not a comp that's like something that is totally different and is going to completely affect valuation and the one that's zoned like industrial if these are um residential they're not a comp so uh, and another big piece is i'm not seeing the descriptions so i want people to like show me on zillow the actual listing and show like open up you know see more on the description and i want to be able to read it on the video to ensure that there's not improvements because a big piece that people miss is there this property has been a has a permit in hand for septic or for well or already has a well installed that stuff can substantially impact valuation and how much is you know market by market specific so i do agree that it was decent um but on this one i'm gonna have to set up a call with him to get more of the specifics in the background and and then to kind of talk to you know those those pieces on the comps so that is you know kind of my overall thoughts on this one Let's see the comments here yeah i mean there there are outliers jennifer like there's this lady named Kathleen who my wife talks to all the time and she does stuff in multiple states, <clears throat> but she's the exception, not the rule. And I would be very leery to use people who are not local because you want to make sure you're working with somebody who really knows what they're talking about.